We're coming to the end of Waterloo Uncovered 2018. Another two weeks of work finished. And it's been a real challenge this year, largely because of the weather. It's been very, very hot indeed, so people have been drinking water constantly. But an amazing amount of work has been done, and I'm really pleased with the results. Down in the courtyard, we've got the trenches run by Phil, Ava and Emily, and they've been doing incredible work sorting out what's happening with that big barn that sits against the north wall next to the gate. It's a building which is much, much bigger than we thought it was, even from original plans. And at Emily's end, we've worked out that it does abut. It, it is joined to the range of buildings that runs down the east wall that we've excavated in previous years. Um, Ava's wall has given us a more idea of the substantial nature of that structure with a beautiful big thick wall with what might be a pillar inside it, but that will have to await next year. And then Phil, once again, I think for the third year, has been looking at the, the end of that building next to the gate. And more evidence of the destruction and burning caused during the battle. And we've had burned bone. We've had our specialists look at that. Some of it might actually be human. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about that, but that's obviously a really interesting possibility given that we've already had a cold stream guard button and musket balls and a bit of gold thread out of that corner but what it looks like is that these aren't original deposits this is the remains that are left when they've salvaged basically what can be reused of the building once it's been burnt out and they've removed the flooring stones taken them away and reused them and what we've got are the, the roofing tiles and bits of brick that have been left behind and have just been abandoned really on the burnt out site. But the walls are, are pretty, the foundations are pretty well preserved. So a very profound and very clear impression of that area. And when those French troops break through the gate there, they're not entering a big space as is the impression today. They're entering a very claustrophobic enclosed space. And it's within that small space that they fought and died and I think we've all been quite moved by that, the really visceral impression that the archaeology has given us there. Moving out of the courtyard into the walled garden, Alistair's team have been working against the foundations of the wall that was defended during the battle. And like elsewhere, what his team has encountered is evidence for the rebuilding of the wall. It now looks as, as though none of that wall is original. It's all on original foundations, we've got evidence for that, but it's been rebuilt on at least one occasion over time and has obviously been something of a tourist attraction. That's not to detract from it, it's in its original position and some of it will be 19th century. It's just not the wall that was fought over during the battle. But the evidence for that fight continues to come out, particularly this year in the killing ground where we've put in more trenches and I think now we've closed most of the gaps that we had as far as the detector survey is concerned. So I think we've now got a pretty complete picture of the French attack on that wall and the nature of the defence. And again, it looks like we've got several hot spots where the French have hit the wall with musketry and indeed on the corner with cannon fire. And then in some places got over the wall because from last year and previous years, we've got that evidence for the firefight inside the garden. And again, that's been a really incredibly detailed picture, which has added new evidence and, and a new jigsaw piece to the puzzle that is the, the story of this place. Um, what is also exciting about this year has been the move away from Ugamon. Up until now, we've been fairly focused on Ugamon, and even though there's still much more work to be done here, I've always been very keen that we look at the wider battlefield and we were very pleased this year and as a byproduct of the hot weather that some of the fields have been cropped, the harvest has been taken in at least a month earlier than it normally would. So there are fields that are available to us for detector survey that wouldn't normally be. And up at Le Haysan, up at the crossroads where the farm is there, the field where the inner skilling regiment, the Irish regiment that suffered very badly late in the day when La Haison fell and the French brought up their artillery and pounded the square for 
a long time at a very close distance, killing and, and wounding many of the men there. Um, that field became available to us, thanks to the landowner. And so we've had people in there doing a, a full-on, very detailed detector survey with mixed results. A disappointment is that there's been a lot of robbing uh, by detectorists operating illegally and more of that presently. So there's not as much there as there could be, but that was the case when we first looked at the killing ground. And it was only when we started to strip away the soil with the machine and then detect those exposed layers that the evidence started to come out there. And that might be the case up at the crossroads. We've certainly got interesting material. I've seen pan brushes used to clean out the pans of the muskets. There's a lot of musket balls. Not much in the way of cannon shot, which is unusual given that they were pounded by the French guns. But we've yet to really look at the plot of that. We've got all of the information we now need to start to interpret it. The other interesting place we've been able to look at this year is the site of the sand pit. Now this was a sand quarry that sits across the road from the farm at Lehaysan. And Lehaysan was famously defended by the King's German Legion until it basically was taken by the French because the defenders ran out of ammunition at about half five in the evening of the battle. And once the French could get up to the farm, it's then that they could move up their artillery and start to pound the squares, and particularly the inner skillings. But the sand pit on the other side of the road was up until that time defended by the iconic 95th rifles. And it's been a dream really to be able to go and take a look at that site. And we've got paintings from the time which show the sand pit with the farm across the road. And it's an episode from after the battle when they're using it to bury the dead. So we've been up there doing very small test pits, digging everything by hand and sieving all of the soil that's come out of those test pits in the hope that it might give us an idea of the size of the sand pit. We do have geophysics plots from there that our team from Ghent did right from the beginning of the project. But this is the first time we've actually been able to go up there and do a little bit of excavation. And the picture is starting to appear. We think we're now on the fringes of that sand pit. So again, like the field at the crossroads, we're hoping to come back. I think the sand pit will be a big target for next year. And I'm really excited about next year because we will then have work continuing at Ugamon, but really interesting aims and objectives centered on sites further away across the battlefield. So Waterloo Uncovered is starting to grow up, really.